Okay, let's go on to our next training session, which is an introduction to, to building custom dashboards in Squared Up. So before I go over to the demo lab to show you this hands-on in action, I thought I'd walk you through the various options available to you. In this session, I'm just going to do live demos of some of the more simple ones, but I thought it might be a good in chance to give you an overview of some of the more complicated things that you can do um, to give you some ideas or perhaps some questions for you to go and ask your Scrum admin to see if he can help you within your environment. So let's take them step by step. When we open out a new dashboard in Squared Up using the plus button, a blank canvas is drawn for us with a bunch of tiles available. And these tiles are the different visualizations available to us. The first bunch are pretty straightforward. So status, you've either got icons or nice large blocks for um, kind of high impact visualizations. And those are going to display the health states of your objects. So your applications, your groups, your servers, your disks, and so on. Um, nothing too complicated there. Alerts, again, pretty straightforward. Put your alerts on a dashboard, open alerts, close alerts, and so on. Monitors can be a bit more interesting. This is useful if you're less interested in the overall state of a specific object, but in the health of individual monitors. So you're not worried about some kind of low level alert which turns your server yellow or red. It's only if there's a specific issue with a specific monitor that you want that to see that on a dashboard. And you can do that using monitors. Dynamic table is what I would sort of think of a, as a KPI type visualization, an at a glance overview of the health of things like servers, disks, and so on. That can be sort of very, very useful, showing you CPU usage, memory usage, the number of CPUs on a given server, and so on. Visio, we'll look at in more depth in another session, but that allows you to tie your SCOM data to your Visio diagrams to make those Visio diagrams live. Image is nice and straightforward, allows you to import any bitmap image into Squared Up and overlay the um, health of your SCOM objects on top of that. So the example you see here is a pretty classic one, a world map. And SLAs, again, very straightforward, uptime reporting based on the underlying capability to do that within SCOM. Web content is um, a little bit more special. This gives you the ability to insert either raw HTML into your dashboards or to pull in other web pages via an iframe. So that might be a preview of a website or web application you're monitoring, um, pulling in perhaps another monitoring tool. We've seen customers do that with New Relic, for example, and put those views alongside their SCOM data using Squared Up. Loads of options there. SQL allows you to query any arbitrary external SQL database and pull the results back into your squared up dashboards and drill downs in tabular or scalar number format. Performance is visualization of SCOM performance data, and you can do that either as line graph, sparkline, bar chart, or heat map, as is most appropriate. SCOM task is certainly a more advanced use case. This allows you to use the SCOM agent to pull on-demand data automatically into your drill down views. I'm not going to go into too much detail around that now. As I say, that's advanced use case, I would say. OMS allows you to pull in data from OMS, also known as Azure Log Analytics, and again, display that in your dashboards and drill downs in either tabular or scalar number format. And very similar is our web API tile, but this actually allows you to pull data from any um, REST API. So great examples uh, might be things like ServiceNow or Splunk. And again, put that right alongside your SCOM monitoring data in either tabular or scalar number format. So with that, let's now sort of switch over to my demo lab and show you how to do some of the basics of building a custom dashboard. So I'm just going to switch over. There's my demo environment, and I've got it already opened out on a new dashboard. So we'll just call this Simple Dashboard. And the first tile I'm going to select is the status tile. And I'm going to choose the nice large block visualization available to me. And having done that, we're now taken into the scoping section. And this is key for building any dashboards is what do you want to be on the dashboard, or in this case, to be on this section of the dashboard. 
Now we've got an advanced section here, which I'm going to leave out of today's demo and just focus on the two sort of bread and butter ones. List is very straightforward. This allows you to search through SCOM for the objects you want and essentially manually build a list of what you want to put onto the dashboard. So for example, server web 01, server web 02, I think we've got a web 03 as well. So we can just build that out manually. That's nice and simple. But I imagine a more common use case for you is going to be putting groups um, onto dashboards. So hopefully your SCOM administrator has ordered your SCOM environment nicely so you can target dashboards to groups. In our case, we've got oh, a sales app and the Windows servers in our sales app. I've got that set up as a group and there are those seven servers that are part of that app. I can also sort this, so I'm going to do that here and I'm going to sort it by health state and descending so that I'm surfacing any servers in warning or critical state and that's sort of particularly useful when working with larger groups. I can arrange how I view the blocks, so I'm going to put four uh, columns across my page, I'm going to make them a bit narrower and I'm actually going to make the font size a little bit smaller as well. I've got some labeling options. I'll move past those for now and just show you the sub-label options. We're showing here the health state summary. So in other words, why is SQL 04 uh, in a warning state? Well, it's because of a service pack issue on SQL 2014. Also quite useful here is uh, the last state change. So how long this, this server's been in its current state? That might be quite useful as we see here, for example, SQL 03. Well, Previously, I was looking at SQL 03, it's green, everything's all good. Actually, it's only been healthy for five minutes, so presumably some incident has just occurred on SQL 03. I might be interested to go and investigate that. We'll leave that at health state summary for now. You can combine those with more advanced functionality, but I'm going to move on and put some alerts on my dashboard. So alerts, select the alerts tile, select group again, and it was my sales at Windows servers that I was after. So I search, find that group. I can filter these if I want, maybe remove informational and low priority uh, alerts. I can change the time frame. I can put a limit to the number of alerts which is displayed. Let's change that to four. And I can rearrange my columns. Let's just give you a simple example here and move time raise to come before the resolution state. And I'm gonna pop in some column titles. Great, that's alerts. Let's continue onwards, and I like this dynamic table style visualization for server KPIs. So I'm gonna do that, find my group again. There we go, and hit done. And I've got a nice overview there, so I'm gonna call that my server KPIs uh, section. And let's have one more. We can see CPU and memory here. We can see our status, we can see our alerts. And I think there's one more kind of real bread and butter thing that we would always recommend putting on a dashboard which is free disk space and I think that's best visualized as a uh, bar graph so I'm going to choose my group here there's that group I'm after and next I'm uh, asked to choose the performance metric that I want to show so a nice tip here is if you're not sure of exactly the name of the metric you're after in this box if you just click the down cursor arrow you'll see that we pull up and surface for you all of the metrics. And as you can see, there's absolutely tons of them that are available for these servers. Luckily, I know what mine is. I can just type it in there. Uh, logical free space for my disks. There we go. And I've got the top end option here. So I don't want to see free disk space for all of them, maybe just the top three or four, three, four, for example. And there we go, those are the ones I want to keep an eye on, just the ones with low disk space, no real issues on any of these servers, luckily. So that's all good, and I'm pretty much done. But we're dropping off down the bottom of the page a little bit here. So if I navigate over to the right of the screen, you'll see I've got a plus button which allows me to add a column here. And this is how I can start to play around with my dashboard layout. So I hit add column, like so. And I can also arrange those columns like that. So I think that's a bit more like it. And I can drag tiles around. So let's pop alerts over there. And let's also pop free disk space over there. And we'll just get rid of this blank tile here using the delete button. 
You'll see I've also got a button there where I can clone a section, so that can be pretty useful. But I'll stop uh, building this out for now, and I'm going to hit Publish. I won't add it to the navigation bar, as it's just a demo. And Publish, and there we go. That's ready to go. And the last thing I wanted to show you uh, around building out my sort of dashboards is how easy it is to make those available as open access, which as we covered previously, is how you can share these dashboards among a much wider audience, whether or not those are Scrum users and so on. And we just click the share button to do that. I can put it in open access mode and we clearly explain to you what that is. It's non-interactive, no authentication, no user license needed. And very often you might be sharing those in other web portals such as SharePoint. So here I'm going to choose the embeddable option. I hit generate. That's now ready. And if I hit preview, opening up in a new tab is going to be that open access dashboard. So that just has to build for this first time. That's now being prepared. And in just one second, we should have a non-interactive version of that dashboard. It's produced as a static image, but that is going to automatically update every 60 seconds. So unlike my interactive dashboard, I can't click to drill down into any of these. That's just a fixed image. And if I just go back to the dashboard that I was building in my other tab, obviously with these, I can click to drill down and to investigate what's going on. So I hope that's been a helpful introduction to you to building custom dashboards within Squared Up. There are lots more materials uh, available to you online, but hopefully that gives you an idea as how you can get underway.